Hello, welcome to Maths with J. All four parts of this question are about the curve C. We can see that it's a cubic, and if we look at part B of this question, we need to find the coordinates of the turning points of the curve, and in part D, we're going to determine the nature of the turning points. So although we're not actually being asked to sketch the curve, really we need to think about what the curve is going to look like to check whether or not we've got the right answer. So we know that if we've got a cubic, we expect the curve to be continuous. We expect in general that it would have two turning points because when we differentiate a cubic, we'll get a quadratic equation and in general, a quadratic equation will have two solutions. Now, the important thing to look at now is the sign of the coefficient of x cubed. So we see that it's positive, and that tells us which way round the cubic curve is going to be. We can see that when x is very large and positive, y will be very large and positive, and similarly, when x is very large and negative, y will be as well. So that tells us that we're expecting the curve to look like this sort of thing. So we can see that there are two turning points there and we're expecting to find that the smaller turning point is a local maximum and the bigger one, so when I'm talking about small I'm talking about the, the value of x, so the smaller value of x will give us a local maximum and the bigger value of x will give us a local minimum. So that will help us check whether or not we've worked through this question correctly when we come to part d. So let's start actually doing the question. So in part A, we're differentiating. So differentiating 2x cubed will give us 3 times 2x squared, so that's going to be 6x squared. And then differentiating 5x squared will be 2 times 5x, so minus 10x. And then differentiating minus 4x will be minus 4 and differentiating 2 will just give us 0. So we've done part A. In part B, we want to find the coordinates of turning points. So turning points are going to occur where the uh, gradient is 0, so where the derivative is 0. So we can just write down that 6x squared minus 10x minus 4 is 0. And it's always easier to solve a quadratic like this if we divide through by a common factor. So let's divide through by 2. So we're going to have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is 0. So very simple to factorise as we've got a prime number multiplying the x squared and a prime number as our constant. So to get 3x squared it must be 3x and x. There's a negative in front of the constant term, so we must have a plus in one bracket and a minus in the other. And to get 2, well that must be 1 times 2. So it turns out we end up with plus 1 and minus 2, so that we've got plus 1x minus 6x giving us minus 5x. So either 3x plus 1 is 0 or x minus 2 is 0, so our turning points are going to be when x is equal to negative a third and the other one will be when x is equal to 2. So as expected we found that we have two values for x. So the next thing to do is to find the values for y. So for each of the x values we need to find the value for y. So we need to go back to our original equation giving us y in terms of x. So when x is equal to negative a third, then y is going to be equal to 2 times negative a third cubed. So that's minus 2 over 3 cubed, so minus 2 over 27 for the first term there. And then we're going to have minus 5 times negative a third squared, so minus 5 over 9. And then we're taking away 4 times negative a third, so that will be plus 4 over 3. 
and remembering the constant term at the end. So you could either put that straight into your calculator or you could take 27 as your common denominator. Whichever way you do it, you're going to find that y comes out as 73 over 27. So that's the value of y when x is minus a third. So now let's look at our other x value, which will be simpler, won't it? It's just a, an integer. So when x is 2, y is going to be 2 times 2 cubed, so 2 times 8, minus 5 times 2 squared, so minus 5 times 4. And then we've got minus 4 times 2, and adding the 2 on at the end. So we've got 16 minus 20 minus 8 plus 2. So that's going to be equal to minus 10. So the turning points of C are going to be at, so we've got minus a third 73 over 27. And coordinates of the other point are 2, negative 10. So that's parts A and B answered. So now let's look at part C and we'll just rub out some of part B to give ourselves some more space. So in part C all we have to do is differentiate dy by dx. So we're looking back at part A and just differentiating that. So the second derivative of y is the derivative of dy by dx, which is going to give us 2 times 6x, so 12x, minus 10. So that's part c done. And then part d says hence, which means use what you've just done, in other words use part c, it does also say or otherwise, but usually when a question says hence, it's really telling you the easiest way to do the question. So let's do it in this way. So in other words, we're using the second derivative to find out whether we've got a local maximum or a local minimum at each of our turning points. So let's look at them in order, remembering that we actually know what we're expecting to happen. Look back at the, uh, at the sketch we did at the beginning and uh, Think about what you're expecting to happen when we substitute minus a third into the second derivative. So when x is minus a third, the second derivative is going to be 12 times minus a third. So minus 4, we'll take away 10, so that's going to be negative 14. And the important thing there is that that's negative. So that's telling us that that value of x gives us a local maximum. It's telling us that the gradient is changing from positive to zero to negative as we go through that point. In fact, that's, that matches with our sketch, doesn't it? So that's, that's looking good. So our other value, value of x should come out with a, uh, a positive value for the second derivative and uh, that then all will be well. Right, so let's check that out. So when x is 2, d2y by dx squared is going to be 12 times 2 minus 10, so 24 minus 10 is 14, and that's positive. So that tells us that the, the point 2, negative 10, is a local minimum, as, you would, as we'd expect. So let's just summarise this in here. So the first value gives us that minus a third 73 over 27 is a local maximum. And the other one, so that's 2, negative 10, is a local minimum. So that matches with the uh, the curve that we sketched to start off with. Now it does say in the question, or otherwise. So that does mean that if you wanted to, you don't have to use 
the second derivative, you could use your answer to part A and look at points either side of uh, the two turning points to see what happens to the gradient and explain using that that these points are a local maximum and a local minimum. That's up to you.